Hello YouTube! I wanted to record a short video to demonstrate some helpful features of Excel in combination with features of the Excel checkbook register. This video would demonstrate tasks like inserting and deleting transactions, resorting your transactions, making use of the Excel filter feature to look at expenses, as well as to use that feature to make it faster to set a category on a bunch of transactions. So I've got a sample spreadsheet here with just a bunch of random uh, data in it that I'll make use of. So I've got some transactions of a variety of, of, of type over the last uh, month or so. And one of the things that can often come up is that you need to either insert a transaction uh, in between uh, some existing ones, or maybe even delete a duplicate transaction. So uh, if, for example, I've got an entry here for auto parts 1209 and another one that's also for 1209, and I figured out, okay, hey, that was a duplicate. So a couple ways I could delete that. I could point at the row 19 with my mouse, do a right click and choose delete. Or another option is, as long as my mouse is in one cell of that row, up on the Excel toolbar, uh, there's a you know, delete button. And if I click the down arrow for that, there's a choice here that says, you know, delete sheet rows or delete table rows. Actually, either one will work just fine. I'll choose that delete table rows to delete that extra entry. Now, in a similar way, let's say that I am missing an entry on December 30. So, I, I, you know, I know it's going to then be before this January 2nd entry. A couple ways I can insert an extra row. I could point at the number 20 with my mouse, do a right click and choose insert. That certainly works. Or again, just as long as my mouse is in one of the cells of row 20, there's the insert button with a drop down arrow here. And if I click on that, I've got that choice to either insert a row or insert a table row. Again, either one will work. I'll use that choice to insert a table row. And now that I've got that empty row, I could go ahead and, and put in uh, the missing entry that I forgot to put in there. So maybe it's my, you know, electric bill. Okay, so now I've got that entry in there. And yeah, perhaps I also do want to make sure that I get it uh, categorized. Okay, so I'll put that in there as well. Now also related, the spreadsheet will have by default your transactions sorted on the date column. In fact, you can, might be able to see a tiny little arrow right there. And if I click on that arrow, it's currently you know, set to sort oldest to newest. Um, so you know, one of the things that uh, you know, maybe you can also do is, let's say, for example, you've got a bunch of transactions that you forgot to put in for earlier in the month. So I could start putting in, for example, uh, one slash two, because it's the current year, I can just go ahead and hit the enter key and it'll, it'll assume the current year and you know, put in some entries. So anyway, you, you get the idea. Now, uh, what I can do next is, you know, I'd like to keep these in date order. So I can go up to this little indicator up here, click on that, and just tell to sort oldest to newest. And it has automatically, you know, resorted the list. And, and there are my, my two entries that I just put in in proper date order. All right, ne next, let's talk about some uh, Excel filter functionality. Uh, so this is, you know, built into Excel, and we can certainly take advantage of it within the checkbook register. So all these different columns have, uh, you know, the filter option available. For example, under transaction type, if I click the arrow, I can say, you know, I'm really just curious to see my checks. So if I tell to unselect all, click so there's only a check being shown, click OK. Now I just see the uh, check amounts. OK, now if I go back up to that same little drop down, I can tell to clear that filter and I'm back to seeing all my transactions. Uh, similarly, I could click to transaction type, uh, deselect all, and maybe I just want to see my ATM transactions, and, and there we go. So I'll go back and clear out that filter. And in a similar way, I might be curious to just see my transactions of a particular subcategory. So if I go over here and you know deselect all, and I'm maybe just curious to see all the uh, automobile gas transactions. So I can click that as my filter choice and then see those dollar amounts. Now something else that's built into Excel is, you know, after I've perhaps filtered some transactions in this way, if I take my mouse and click and hold down and highlight uh, some values, down at the bottom of Excel, it'll actually show me the average account and the sum of those highlighted numbers. So that can be interesting to see. So I'll go back now and clear out that last filter. 
Lastly, here's another way that filtering on subcategory can be helpful. Well, actually, not filtering on subcategory, but filtering in the transaction description so that you can populate the subcategory. Uh, so let me give you an example. Let's say that I've, I have made the effort to get a lot of my transactions into the spreadsheet over a long period of time. Maybe you and I perhaps have downloaded my transactions from the bank, and now I'd like to get these categorized for evaluation, analysis, to see them in the charts, etc. So what I'll sometimes do is make use of the filter feature within the transaction description box. And uh, here in the search area, I'll put in, for example, a, a common grocery store that I might go to, uh, uh, Kroger. And I don't yet have these categorized. So here in the very first one, I'll start to type in the subcategory, hit my enter key because it, it is groceries. And the next, I just want to sort of like autofill all those. So uh, if I take my mouse and get it just in that bottom corner, so I see that black plus symbol, and hold down, drag down, let go, it's now populated all three of those entries in that way. And I can go back now to transaction description, clear that filter, and see that they have correctly categorized just those particular entries. And in a similar way, maybe I've got a lot of uh, entries for McDonald's, so I'll go ahead and click that filter button. And uh, you know, all, all I really need to do is chop in enough that's kind of unique. I don't even type out the whole word, but I'll put that in there. I've got you know, a couple entries right there. And you know, again, I'll just put in you know, dining out really quick there and go back and clear my filter. And those are now subcategorized. So I hope that gives you some ideas of how to take full advantage of Excel with your checkbook register using filter features, uh, inserting and deleting rows, resorting the list, etc. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and happy spreadsheeting.